Hello fellow humans and welcome to the Madhouse. I'm Josh and today is the return of Top 5 Wednesday. The topic I believe is your favourite required reading, that is books you had to read for school or courses. Now I have several of these and to be honest I could probably do top 10 but I'm not going to. There will be a few honourable mentions though, which I'm sure you'll be fine with because hey, let's face it, book recommendations are always good. So without further ado, I'll begin. At number 5 there is Angela Carter's The Magic Toy Shop. It's a great little book, it's slightly freaky but it, and full of lots of symbolism. It's um, a feminist retelling, or I suppose it's not exactly feminist, but rather it leads to the conclusion of feminism, while not actually portraying itself as feminist, so it's rather cleverly done. There's a retelling of, or a performance of, and a theme running throughout of Leader or Leda and the Swan, I don't know how to pronounce the name, where Zeus turns into a swan and has his way with the woman with the unpronounceable name. There is John Webster's The Duchess of Malfi. Now this is a very fun book. It's a play actually, and a, ooh, what was the dating of this? A 16th century play I believe? And it's truly fantastic, it's of course set in that kind of time period, I believe more specifically around, ooh, what date would it be? I think it starts in about 1504 which would work because the cardinal character in this seems to be a great reference to um, Rodrigue Borgia or Pope Alexander the whatever and Alexander died in 1503, 1504 around that time. So this would be a direct continuation of that character, except it isn't. And it's a wonderful family drama almost, except it's not really a drama, it's more of a Torment Your Sister show. And by Torment Your Sister I mean, let's strangle her to death after driving her insane kind of torment. Think Game of Thrones, but based with actual real people, there were uh, people like this, not quite with this, these events happening to them, but they weren't so rare. It, it's truly fantastic. There was Philip K. Dick's Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. This technically wasn't required reading because we had to choose the book ourselves, but we did have to choose a book to write a short piece of fiction and a commentary on that fiction based on this. And I quite enjoyed it. To be honest, I think I prefer it to Blade Runner which isn't surprising really because I usually prefer books to film so there are only a few examples of those where I don't. Lord of the Rings. It's a fantastic story of science fiction. Practically anyone I know who's read it really enjoys it. Um, it's a bit of a strange world where animals are coveted as a status symbol because there's been almost like an apocalypse called World War... I don't remember what it was. World War X perhaps? I don't know. Set in the 1990s and there are off-world colonies and androids and simulants and this is all about um, Deckard trying to find some of these simulants. At number two then is William Blake's Songs of Innocence and Experience and I have to say I love Blake's poetry anyway but this edition I bought a couple of weeks ago. It's going to be in the second half of my haul video, that's what I'll do on Friday, good idea. And it's just... I love listening to Blake's poems. My favourite one is of course the tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Wonderful poem, brilliantly done. I used to think that Blake was terrible at rhyme, but then I realised language has evolved, so actually the words he wrote at the time probably did rhyme with one another. But it's a bit weird when you look at work and fork. They don't sound alike to me at all, but they would have done to him. There are two honourable mentions of the Life of Brian's screenplay and Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle McGorian. Excellent books, especially this one. It's okay, it's aimed at children, but it's still fantastic. Very emotive, tugs at your heartstrings. And lastly, at number one, there is a book that I don't have here today because I've lost it Kintsuki's Kingdom by Michael Mopurgo. Fantastic book, truly amazing. We were supposed to read it in year five, year six, and year seven, and again in year eight, but the year eight never actually happened. I in fact read this while I was in year three I think it was and I absolutely adored it. I've read it every time I had to since and loved it every single time. But 
I would love to read it again, but I can't find a copy anywhere. It doesn't seem to be stopped much in libraries nowadays. I think many people my age have chosen to hate it because they were forced to read it. Like they do with Shakespeare, I think if they actually sat down and read it or watched it perform properly, they would love it. But they don't. And this is the same thing. You know, that sparked another idea for a video, actually. I'll come back to you on that one. And that'll do. I hope you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe and do the sharing thing. I well, hope you have a wonderful day and I would continue and do a bit more with this bit but I have to go and catch a bus because I have to go and do some shopping and meet a friend. So cheers and goodbye.